Medicare and Medicaid make up over 6% of our nation's GDP and a much larger share of the federal government spending on health care. So it's very hard to see how to address the problem of the federal deficit without taking steps to address Medicare and Medicaid costs and financing. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, Medicare, Medicaid, and deficit reduction. Medicare and Medicaid, the nation's health care programs for the aged and impoverished, have long been considered off-limits to government tampering. But as our debt escalates, revenues decline, and the population ages, the buzz in Washington is, it's time to change how these medical plans are run. Calling the cost of our entitlement programs unsustainable, Engelbert Center Director Mark McClellan says, making smart changes to these programs now will help strengthen our fiscal health later. Mark. The nation's finances are facing some real critical challenges, especially as our debt continues to rise and rise. Conventional wisdom in Washington is that Medicare and Medicaid need to be addressed if we're going to get this debt under control. Explain, if you would, the connection between these entitlement programs and our nation's bottom line. Since 1965, when Medicare and Medicaid started, we've seen the cost of these programs grow much faster than the rest of the economy, much faster than uh, many people had projected, and those costs are continuing to grow now. This is a very predictable problem. Because we haven't done anything to mitigate that cost growth substantially, the result is that everything else that the federal government does has been squeezed down. So as a proportion of federal spending, uh, initiatives related to the nation's infrastructure, initiatives related to education, e even initiatives related to national defense have been squeezed down as a part of total, health, total federal spending relative to health care. And that's part of the real trade-off here, that uh, uh, even if you want to, to spend more on health care, it does have consequences elsewhere. So we really do need to take some steps to address these challenges sooner rather than later, not just because of rising health care costs, but because of all the pressure that it's placing on the rest of the federal budget. Mark, this moment of truth that we've reached with these entitlement programs has been a long time coming. How is it that we let it get to such a state of crisis? Medicare and Medicaid are, some, are programs that touch virtually every American either directly or someone that they care deeply about. So they are going to be a central part of any policy debate and discussion. And Republicans have, and Democrats have different visions about the future for these programs. I do believe that there are some elements of what Democrats and Republicans support that could be part of a longer term solution. Things like paying providers more and paying them better when they take steps to deliver innovative care in ways that save money. Things like uh, helping consumers, consumers save money when they take steps to stay healthy or use drugs and other treatments uh, more effectively you know, where they can meet their needs uh, at a lower cost and giving some role for, for choice and giving people an opportunity to save when they make uh, uh, more effective uh, decisions about their health care. Um, but getting from here to there is a big challenge because people care so much about health care. The challenge, though, the real challenge is that if we don't take these steps, uh, there will be consequences. Clearly, our nation's um, financial issues are, are no joke, nor is it a joke that we need to provide adequate medical care for both our aged and impoverished populations. So both of these things, our money issues and our health care issues, need to be addressed today. Medicare and Medicaid current policies are not going to be sustainable. Uh, Medicare's costs are rising much faster than our ability to finance it. According to the actuaries, the, the hospital trust fund is going to be insolvent in a matter of uh, a decade. Uh, in, on the Medicaid side, state budgets are being strained under the current program and they aren't going to be able to sustain the same level of coverage and support as they have today if costs keep rising, if we don't do anything about the Medicaid policies. I think the important thing to remember is that this is a problem of spending growth and cost growth. It's not a problem that requires radical changes in access to care or in the way that care is delivered right now, but if we don't start making these changes, if we don't start applying some of the knowledge that we have on better ways to deliver care and policies in Medicare and Medicaid that can make it easier for doctors and patients to deliver care and get the kind of care that they need, then we are going to be in a, a situation where we will have to make more radical changes. Well, Mark, we've established that both Democrats and Republicans agree that changes have to be made to these programs. The whys and the hows always seem to fall along, along party lines. Are they playing politics with the nation's health care? 
both Democrats and Republicans think that reforming Medicare and Medicaid in some way should be on the table because they all recognize that we can't address the nation's fiscal problems without uh, addressing changes in these programs, but they have very different visions for how to get from here to there. For the Democrats, the emphasis has been on taking steps on the provider side. Uh, some of the provider payment changes that I've talked about uh, are things that many Democrats support and many Republicans support as well. For the Republicans, a lot more emphasis has been on consumer choice and giving people an opportunity to save money when they take steps to get their costs down. I think the right solutions are going to involve a combination of these, steps that make sure that people continue to have access to, to innovative, high-quality care, but that do more to help doctors, to help patients use that care effectively. Bending the curve through health care reform implementation is a Brookings project designed to offer ways to improve health care in this country, and that includes Medicaid and Medicare. Tell me more about it. Here at Brookings, we've had an ongoing project on bending the curve in health care that has involved experts across the political spectrum, advisors to both Democratic and Republican presidents and, and leaders in Congress, uh, uh, a wide range of uh, policy experts as well, that have identified a, a set of steps that we can take collectively and that, that can get, uh, we think, broad-based support for really bending the curve. And these include ideas around reducing health care spending growth through paying providers uh, for delivering better care at a lower cost rather than just simply paying them more for more services and more complications. It includes steps on the consumer side to help them save money when they choose a less costly health insurance plan, when they use benefits in a way that uh, reduces their overall health care cost while improving their health and their quality of life. So there are some steps forward out there and uh, they are going to be uh, an essential part of solving these problems in the years ahead. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.